Hey, everybody, it's Omni Dog on the Omni Bros Live Sunday Show. Welcome. Thank you for tuning in to our Sunday show about nothing. Uh, here with me, of course, is as always my great co host, Gabe Loves 90s Comics. How's it going, buddy? What's up, Jess? Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the Sunday show. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love. Give us a thumbs up. Peace and love. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Uh, peace and love. Don't add me on Facebook. <laughs> uh, I love pre show Omni Dog. <laughs> Anyone else having problems with PayPal? Just can't seem to get Tyler his Dosh. Ah, uh, that's right. Ty after I unboxed the figures, I told Tyler, actually, he hasn't brought it up. It's going to be two and a half months before he gets his money for those figures. Why is that? Because it took him that long to send them to you? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I figure I'll just wait two and a half months to pay him. Hey, Oxman. Mr. Oxman. That's, like, uh, that's like when you buy something on eBay and the guy's like, hurry up and pay. And you go, okay, I'll pay right away. And then they, they don't ship it for like a week. And you're like, what the fuck's going on, dude? Like, I paid I paid quick. You should ship it quick. Yeah, I agree with that. What I hate is when you somebody buys something and then they back out three days later. And there's no That's penalty fine. for it. You can just not, not cancel it and then make it a, a, a non-payment. I think there's a way to mess with them. Or not mess with them. I think there's a way to punish them. Oh, okay. If it happens again, I will uh... let me know. But there's a way to do it. I did it. This, I did it before, where somebody was like, "Oh, I bought this by accident." I was like, "No, you didn't." Like, and then I just never... <laughs> there was a way to file something. There's there's a way to do something that that. Oh, that okay. Them as a as a non-payment, so that you don't get still charged the fees for putting it up or whatever. Yeah, well, it, it wipes my cookies. If from I don't care five dollars to a thousand, whatever it is. If someone's buying something, I, you have to pay for it. Well, yeah, you also don't buy it on accident. Like you legitimately like waited there and and sniped the bid at the last second. Like you you made it happen. Like you, yeah, that was purpose. Oh, it was my kid. Yeah, your kid knows your password, and your kid knows your <laughs> password to, and he knows how to bid, and he's bidding at the right time, and that's fine. But I'm gonna get. There's a way to do it. Like I said, there's a way to do it where they they get some kind of. Some kind of punishment. Nothing oh, major. You're already saying, yeah, you can open an unpaid item case. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Gerard. It happened a while ago. It happened during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And and then the guy criticized my comic. I'm like, do you want this? And it was a good Spider-Man CGC comic. And he's like, after three days, I said, Are you are you, you know, courteously, are you paying for this? Uh, because I need to relist it if you're not. And he's like, no, I decided I don't want. It. I I don't think it. I think I can get a nicer looking seven point five or something. And I'm like, <laughs> fucker! I've been sitting here this whole time. And so then I know his name now, and he tried to buy something for, from me, and I said, no, I'm not selling to you. Yeah, somebody did that to me where we there was like a best offer, and then I you know we made a best offer, and he agreed to it. And then he came back like a day later and was like, I found it cheaper somewhere else. I'm like, yeah, okay, but you, me and you made this agreement. So uh, there goes this uh, unpaid uh, unpaid item case going for you right now. Uh, okay, good. I, I didn't know that I had any kind of recourse. Uh, but yeah, it really frosted my cookies. And so he tried to buy another Spider-Man comic book from me. And I said, oh, he sent me an offer. And I said, I'm not selling to you. So we, gotta, so we have like the 100th uh, Jess account in the chat today. <laughs> Here's Punker Jess flipping off the camera. <laughs> awesome. Punker Jess, way to go. That's hilarious. Uh, I remember that. Why was I saying? Oh, because um, Geo kept putting up the... Uh, Green Goblin and, and Norman Osborn picture for the um, <laughs> for the 
Gwen Stacy thing. I think you can block specific buyers from your auctions. Okay. Yeah, yeah you can block them. I, I block people before too, same, same ones who don't want to buy or something like that. It's not just them. Also, like I, I've had a couple of run-ins with sellers where I, I wanted a book and I won it. And then a couple of days later, they go, oh, uh, I'm going to cancel this because I lost it or I don't know where it's at or I didn't mean to sell it, you know? So. I did that. Yeah. Um, and Carly, don't don't apologize. Um, I think those accounts are hilarious. And I think Punker Jez is funny as hell. Do, uh, <laughs> I think they're funny as heck. Um, I had a guy, uh, I think it was 2019, and it was I was buying an album and it was out of print. It, it had just been released and it went out of print really fast, and he had it for a good price. So I bought it from him and he canceled and raised the price. Yeah. I uh oh, I I don't know if I have it. I called eBay about it and they said I don't have any recourse on that. I thought there's a way you could report them for that these days. I think that's at least there should be. Like, that should really be against some kind of rules. He did it a couple times. Uh he raised it by 25 bucks and then eventually it went into the hundreds. And I was not interested in that uh, record. And then they en ended up reprinting it really fast. So I hope he got burned. So I, uh, there's been some books that I've been like trying to like speculate on, or that I know like I'm trying to get some big books. You know, you got I've been showing them off. I got a really big book in recently that I'll, I'll talk about tomorrow. But there was other ones that I was looking at that were like slightly higher grades, and I was like, oh, you know, do I, I get a little apprehensive. You know, I get a little like, you know, we all kind of get that way. We're like, oh, do I really want to drop like this much money on this right now? And then it 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 slips through my fingers because they they take it down. I go, oh, they took it down. I go look at it. Not only did they take it down, but then they raised the price like eight hundred dollars mm. too. You know, you're like, oh well, I'll go for the, I'll go one grade down and spend a thousand dollars less. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to make my display a little brighter. I can't see anything. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> so what have you been up to, Jess? We haven't talked in a while. Uh, no, we haven't. Uh, well, we had house guests for approximately 12 hours. It was perfect. They rolled in at eight. First of all, I really like these people. They're my old, older friends of my wife's. Mm -hmm. I really like them. But, I mean, we basically had to rebuild the house. We cleaned it from... But the foundation up, I we were scrubbing things that I didn't even know needed to be scrubbed, and this house was immaculate. You threw and everything were, in the closet. Sorry, did you do that thing where you have that one closet that you just throw everything into when guests come over and you hope they don't open it? I stashed everything on my floor in, in the back <laughs> in, in the bath, the bat bathroom. Oh. Um, that stuff needs to be filed anyway, so it, I need to do that today. Uh, but then they, they left at like 9, 9 a.m. this morning. So we have the whole day ahead of us and we look like good hosts. We gave them breakfast and uh, they had uh, dinner and drinks last night. So everything worked out perfect. Oh, did you guys go out last night? Uh, no, we made, uh, Patty made dinner. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was great. Um, actually, I have an answer to that punk rock. If I can find it, here they are. These are by a group called Secret Headquarters. I got them from Third Eye Comics, Punk 2099. I like the title already. Yeah, and it is really cool. Here's Black Flag 2099. Oh, look at that. Henry Rollins there. We've got Fear and the Descendants. 2099. The time of the war. <laughs> Milo goes to college. Um, we've got suicidal tendencies and the Minutemen 2099. This is cool. And then the last page is 
Bloody right eyes go to no oh X two thousand ninety nine nausea, and then by that same company, this one was more expensive. This one was twelve dollars. Oh no, this is by Adam. V okay, wait. Okay, I'll give you the name of both these charming X Men anthology. It's all uh, X-Men in the Smiths titles. There's Cyclops, There is a Light That Never Goes Out, Girlfriend in a Coma with Phoenix. Phoenix Girlfriend Jane. in a Coma, is that the name of a band? That's an, they, these are, do you know the group, the Smiths? Oh, I know of them, yeah. These are all Smiths song titles. Ah. Death of a Disco Dancer, The Headmaster Ritual. I'm not depressed enough to be a fan of the Smiths. <laughs> I saw them live in concert with my girlfriend at the time. Yeah, was everybody crying in the audience? Uh, no, it was great. Hand in glove, angel, angel, down we go together. That's awesome. Archangel's one of my, one of my favorite X-Men. This charming man and pretty girls make graves. That's the name of a really good band, pretty girls make graves. They took their name from uh, that X uh, that X Men song, that Smith song. Pretty uh, girls make pretty corpses. Shoplifters of the world unite and golden lights. Uh, another good punk rock book from uh, our friend Chandler Chandler Reese, right? Re Chandler. Um, yeah, I got it backwards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Punk Rock and Anxiety? Is that what it was called? That, that graphic novel? He Punk Rock and Anxiety. That's right. Yeah. That's a great book. Handsome Devil. This is by... Okay, I'm done. So at, I'll give you the address of the guy. This is his web address. These are old, but maybe he still has some copies. Apparently, the lead singer of the Smiths is a real jerk. Morrissey is Morrissey. Moz. He's, uh, he's Morrissey is Morrissey. That's all I can say. I like this a little bit. Deadly Class is pretty punk rock of a book. Yeah, he's got a whole playlist for that on Spotify. And um, it, it definitely has that kind of uh, 80s, 90s punk rock culture in that book, 100%, too. Yeah. Is half a person in there. Uh, the Queen is dead. First of the gang to die. Ooh, that's brutal. Wow, that's actually uh, very topical. They got the right person in there, too. That matches up. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if half a person's in here. Accept yourself, mute witness. Oh, that's Penance. That's cool. That's Generation X character. Ah, okay. I actually did not recognize that one. Uh, the Queen is dead, and the last one is Oscillate Wildly for uh, Quicksilver, and I keep mine hidden for Wolvie. There's a uh, heavy metal album. I forget the name of the band, but it's called like, I think it's called Wolverine Blues, and it's this really cool like painted Wolverine cover. Wow. Okay, I'm done. Cool. All righty then. So, yeah, NFL Sad Religion. I did the uh, Kickstarter for that, and Hardcore Anxiety is really good. So, Carly says there's a buy one, get one half off sale at Target. So I guess that's twenty five percent off. Nice, good for you, Carly. Yeah, that works. What'd you get? What'd you get? Oh, no, it's right there. She got the Batman, Batgirl, and Rise of the Rise and Fall of the Batman. That's a great one. The Rise and Fall of the Batman. That's wow. That just needs to be called just that should just be called Batwoman because that's such a great series. It is. Uh, Carly said I had her at the Smiths. Nice. That's right. Oh. In okay. Tuned. I haven't heard that. I'll listen to that tonight. 
Uh, Tommy, yeah, Omnicat and I do a lot of Tilly Walden reviews for all her books. That's the last one right there below the uh, Wolverine Blues question. Yeah, that Wolverine Blues cover is so cool. It's just like just this torturous heavy metal Wolverine looking cover. It's great. Oh, it sounds cool. Yeah. Let me see. Let me screen share it. I just like it so much. I'll show you everybody. Yeah. Am I coming in okay? Am I clear? Is my internet being a jerk? <laughs> no, you look fine. Well, thank you. Let's see, this is a nice big image of it. Nope, that sucks. It's always hard to find good images on, on the fly like this. Yeah, look at that cover. It's so cool. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, Discogs. Oh, yeah. So if you want some gnarly looking Wolverine, and I don't know how this blunt shovel cover is kind of intense. All right. This one gets kicked off YouTube. Let me uh, talk about <laughs> that later. There you go, everybody. If you wanted to see something outrageous, there you go. Did you finish uh, Winter Soldier and Falcon? Falcon and Winter Soldier? Captain no. America and Winter Soldier? Whatever. No, I spent the whole week cleaning the house. Ew. So I still have only seen the first episode. That's it? Wow, Jess. I <laughs> know. I know, but I'm interested in enough to finish. And I have, uh, I think I have a reasonably decent week. I have a couple of doctor's appointments. And I believe, let's see, doctor's appointments, blah, 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 doctor appointment. Yeah, okay. I can, I can watch it this week. Cool. Shout out to Mad Dog Comics coming in for the first time finding us live. Peace and love, Mad Dog. Yeah, man. Uh, what about Invincible, Jess? Are you anywhere caught uh, up on Invincible? No. No. I I have a stack of books up. I'm, what? Why are you highlighting me? <laughs> no, I, I, I left. Oh. I dipped. I was like, <laughs> I, um, it's up on my reading pile, and I've called it out to... Not a delusional pile. It's it's a it's a reasonable reading pile. Invincible is in there for me to continue, um, and so I I will definitely get to it. I mean, did I, you watch the show at all? I yeah, I want to get to it so I can yeah. see the show. <laughs> I don't want to have the show ruin the comic books for yeah, me. Yeah, it'll do that. If you haven't read it before, yeah, it's going to ruin it because it's there's a lot of twists in that book. I mean, you know, we've talked about it before, but yeah. Oh, and there's uh, T. Lar Blunt. As a matter of fact, he sent me some selfies that I think I can show. Shelfies, rather. Let's see. No, no, no. I don't want to put it there. Matt Jesus knows what's up. That last episode of Invincible was out of control. It's they they made some changes like to the comic, and it was awesome. Oh, they did. Yeah, it's, it's nothing, nothing crazy, but they really just, yeah, they made some expansions on some crazy stuff. It's I can't say anything because you haven't watched it yet, Jess. Uh, I know. I know. Okay, wait. I'm trying to. My computer is putting back up garbage, trash for some reason. I, I need to. <laughs> I need to eliminate. I thought I emptied that trash. How could it possibly still be uh, in the trash and popping back up on my desktop? I find that highly annoying. Okay, let's see if I can show these shelfies from T. Lar Blunt. Share. Share screen. What in the world? 
Oh, I see. Yeah, the collector issue number one is skyrocketing. I just sold mine, so yeah. Oh, did you? Yeah, I sold my nine six. So I don't have any more invincible number ones, but I've turned that into other books. Nice. Yeah, it got, uh, it got renewed for season two and season three. So uh, congratulations to Kirkman, Ryan Otley, Corey Walker, all that stuff. So very cool. Let's see if I can share this. Uh, which book of the Invincible Ultimate Collection does the show go up to? Uh, it's book two. No, wait. Or is it book one? Holy crap. Uh, I think it's just book one of the uh, Ultimate Hardcovers. It kind of jumps around a little bit. It skips things and stuff like that. But I think it's... I think it's like book one. I think the, the first season is like the first like 12 issues or so. So yeah, I think it's just book one. Tyler Blunt. I have never read nor watched Invincible. Is season one over? Yes, it's over. Go ahead and binge watch that whole thing, Tyler. I'm telling you. Just watch that first episode and you'll be hooked immediately. Not immediately, but at the end of that first episode, you're going to be in forever. Oh, my word. And Kirkman's confirmed Seth Rogen is tapped to produce a live action movie. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Carly says, yeah, it's definitely jumping around in the middle of reading the series and had gotten to most of the events, but didn't remember reading the robot storyline. I think that's a little bit later on in the book. So, yeah, they they, they, they cut to that pretty fast with the, the Moeller twins or the Moeller clones. What? But uh, if they follow it, there's a lot more of the Mauler stuff going on a little bit later on. And they get to, uh, I forgot the guy's name. The, uh, there's a teleporter. Uh, it's a really cool storyline with this teleporter. And the Mauler twins uh, do some, some schemes and make some more crazy machines that, uh, that does some crazy fun stuff too. Really excited about it, man. That's such a good series. I'm glad that... It's like with the boys, where I'm glad, especially with Invincible, I'm so glad it is now on everybody's radar. We were talking about it for a long time. We were supposed to do like a readathon, but that never happened. But I'm glad that it's now getting the attention. Because I, I still say it's better than Walking Dead. It's Kirkman's best series, is Invincible. Uh, I, I agree with that 100%. Uh, I don't Click security, system preferences, security, click privacy. Yeah, yeah. Tommy, what is the best way to collect Invincible? I would say there's 12 oversized hardcovers. That's probably my, my favorite way of getting it. There's also like really thick, there's three, three, that's how, that's that's the right number, three fingers, three, uh, like big, thick compendium, uh, like soft cover compendiums. And then there's like hardcover versions of those compendiums. And then there's also, I think it's also three like slipcase ones too. But I think most of, I think those slipcases might be hard to find. But the uh, oversized hardcovers, I believe, are still pretty readily available. And the boys, they just, they announced, uh, Bleeding Cool did an article that Dynamite sold 350 thousand copies of the boys omnibuses like oh, you're kidding. 350 thousand copies since season one started wow dean winchester wants a drunk episode again <laughs> only one person was drunk in that yeah we could uh, we could probably get around where we could get most of us drunk or inebriated somehow Okay. Here's... It has to be like we can't really plan it. I think it works better yeah. where it's just kind of like, you know, it oh, to... it just it just kind of happens. Yeah, it has to organically happen. Yeah, because we did that before. Riley, I think, was the first one who did like this drunk <laughs> rant on Civil War Two, and he was just he just was just chugging whiskey like it was. Well, like it was water. I know. he was sipping it, but I think mm -hmm. he, you watched him just 
as he progressed into his drunken state. It was weird because I never saw anybody since my 20s uh, shotgun an entire bottle of Jim Beam like he did. <laughs> That's not what he did. <laughs> Okay, finally, I'm, I installed Norton 360 on my computer this morning, and now it's like um, I'm reporting to duty in the army. I have to go through all these gyrations, all these checkpoints and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see if I can share this. Streamyard is sharing a window. Okay, there's Tyler's first picture. Is this a snuff film? <laughs> I mean, it is Tyler Blunt, so, you know. Yeah, let's and let's go to the next picture. Um, I can see that he's got the Alzheimer's in Thor. I can tell that in a blurry image. Yeah, there's there's that picture. This is like when I ask somebody to send me nudes. Then there, there's this picture. Wait, I thought it, I was sharing. Yeah, there's that picture. I have to allow it. Okay, Tyler, you, th this is a good shelfie that you did. All right. Uh, and then, let's see. Here is uh, this picture. Uh, let's see. How did I do that? Oh my gosh, my life was so much easier before I did Norton 360. Are you on a Mac or a PC? Yeah. A Mac? You don't I don't think you really need antivirus stuff for a Mac. I, you know, I did get stuff. I'll tell you about it as soon as I show his last picture. Let's see if it shows there. And there's Tyler's last picture, a bunch of domino action figures. Thank oh, you for sending those poor in. Pol poor Polaris and poor Forge. <laughs> uh, I started getting these notices on my brand new computer that said, um, you're running out of memory. Uh, you need to quit some applications. It's brand new. I'm not running out of memory. So I researched it and it's called scamware where they try to get you to download uh, crappy um, software to, to clean your uh, computer of viruses. And so that's why I got Norton 360 because I've already got LifeLock and it was a package and um, it's completely taken over my com computer. Uh, Norton what happens when you visit those types of websites, Jess? No, but I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Norton 360 is taking over my computer. I have to ask yeah. it permission to do all this stuff. That would have been a lot funnier if I didn't have to go through 19 things to show those stupid blurry pictures. Yeah, I had I had Norton like years ago on like a the like e machine I had or something like years and I was it, it was it's, they uh, e -machine. Have, they, e wow e -machine. that was like one of my first computers I bought was an e machine. And yeah, I remember it. Norton's never changed. I, I had a, it was almost like it was like my parent. Like I had to ask it to do. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, so it's protecting me. Uh, Carly, uh, any are any of Kirkman's more recent series good? Uh, it's the only one I've been checking out and I've been enjoying a lot is Firepower. Firepower is really, really, really cool. It's uh it's Chris Samney on the art. So that's basically the only reason I started picking up was for the Chris Samney art. Cause I mean, we kind of make a joke about Kirkman on the show. Like we have a golden Kirkman award for the Omnis, which is really like the shittiest book award. Uh, but that was a, that's a really good book mainly because of the uh, Chris Samney art. It's a very martial arts kind of, you know, Oh, you know, you're the chosen one. And you know, that kind of thing. It's a good book though. I'm enjoying it. They released it. What's really cool is the first issue is a trade paperback. It's like a 120 page trade paperback is the first issue. I like that. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, my answer is 
the only book I've ever read by him that I've liked has been Invincible. I didn't like Astonishing or Astounding Wolfman. I didn't like his Ant-Man. I didn't like Thief of Thieves. I didn't like... I never read Walking Dead. Uh, what else? I don't know about Die, Die, Die. I like the art. I think the art's Chris Burnham. Uh, he did a series with Rob Liefeld for a, a hot second called Infinite. That was kind of all right. Um, just as Thank awesome. Thank you, That girl shirt. Um, I yeah, I'm not a Kirkman fan. I didn't. I haven't read Die Die Die. You know, I I would I like the idea of Irredeemable being made into like some kind of like, you know, multimedia project. But I also kind of like the idea of it being kept kind of in the comic book realm and known to like comic book fans only. I don't know. I'd like it if it was just in print. <laughs> so everybody could read it. Well, yeah, come on, boom. Like every, everything of that series is sold out every single single time. It's the trade paperback sold out, the 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 uh, the hardcovers, the the uh, the compendiums that came out all mm -hmm. just disappeared. Yeah, you and I beat the drum on Irredeemable, and we've been beating the drum for that thing for five years, Jess. Yeah. Since the show started. Yeah, you're exactly right, and uh, I, I just don't understand. It's probably one of Boom's most popular products, and it sells out all the time. Well, I don't know if it, if it's its most popular. Uh, product, but it awesome. would be if they kept it in print. Like, it's not, you know, something's killing the children, or um, like Boom's really been knocking out of the park with their books yeah. lately. Department uh, of Truth is supposed to be good, although Lou doesn't like it. Yeah, Department of Truth, something's killing the children. There's a lot of good stuff coming out from Boom, but if they would let Irre Irre uh, Irredeemable be out there in the public and let people discover it and let us recommend it and you could find it, yeah. it would be one of the most popular things out there, period. It's one of the best books, period. period. I 100% agree. I made a video on it saying that it was the best book ever. Uh, Dean Winchester, what is your most wanted omnibus reprint? Hmm. Uh, I don't, it's not an omnibus, but the only one I really need or want is Stupid Phalex Covenant. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I know everything else is going to get reprinted. Like, I know, like, I've been selling a lot of my books. So I know they're going to get reprinted, like JMS Spider-Man and, you know, Peter David Thor or Peter David Holt. All that stuff's going to get reprinted. But, you know, <sighs> stupid Phalex Covenant has not been reprinted. Everything of else in X-Men almost has been reprinted. I'll tell you what book I want reprinted or collected because last Monday... I bought the wrong book. N Man 40 helpfully pointed out that I bought the black BPRD the Black Flame. What I want is Rise of the Black Flame. That's an orphan book, uh, along with BPRD being human. I have BPRD being human, but I need the rise of the black flame. That's a trade, and it sells for like sixty bucks on eBay, and well, I am paying that. Sixty bucks for a trade? No, it's... no. Wow. So, uh, Joel J. Hey, everybody, do you think the Claremont and Jim Lee omnibus is a good starting point on X Men? Thanks. I don't think this really is, unfortunately, much of a good starting point when it comes down to X Men because it's just so. It's so thick and dense, the X-Men, like mythos and everything like that. But I think that's a good, a good, you know, waiting in point. I guess a good way to kind of cut in line kind of point. Uh, it's it's great stuff. I enjoyed all of that. I, I, I mean, but there's going to, it references a lot of stuff because Claremont was on X-Men for like, what, close to 20 years? It's like 17 years or something like that. And it's all it's all interconnected. So there's a lot of references to stuff that happened way earlier, like uh, like with uh, Inferno, 
or like Giants has X Men stuff. Like it's it's all over the place. That's why I mean by it's very dense and, and heavy handed. So you just kind of just gotta. It's just like reading comics when I was first growing up, or or just you gotta kind of just jump in somewhere and work your way forward and work your way backwards at the same time. Yeah, I I agree with everything you said. I you could probably start with uh, House of X, Powers of X, the completely new Hickman reboot. Um, I've enjoyed that a lot. Uh, but yeah, you sort of just have to wade in and Wikipedia your way up to where it is and go from there because he's going to reference, there'll be new stories, but as Gabe says, he's going to be referencing stuff from earlier on. Um, so I, uh, yeah, that I would because then doesn't Inferno come right after that? I think it's Inferno is a little bit before that. Are you sure? Somebody, I'm positive. You're positive. Yeah, Jim Lee wasn't on X Men during Inferno. That was all like Mark Silvestri and um. Oh, my book were out of Walt, order then. That's when Walt Simonson was doing X Factor. Oh, my books are out of order then. Okay. Yeah. It is after Inferno. Damn it. Now I have to research and shoot. Oh no, Jess has to go like this. Oh, oh, oh. that's all. You well, got. You, got, you guys got to switch it. There's well, I know, but then what comes right after X Men? Is it Extinction Agenda? Yeah, it's Extinction. It's a uh, it's Jim Lee Claremont one Extinction Agenda uh, X Men Jim Lee two. Well, it's not really Volume two, but you know, it's, it's that second. Oh no, it's, this is Volume two on it. Uh, Bishop's Crossing. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, executioner song. Fatal oh, all right. Yeah. So I stick. Okay. X Men comes after Inferno, but Extinction Agenda goes between the two X Men. Right. Okay. Okay. And what comes right before Inferno? Is it Mutant Massacre? I, I, I want I want to say yes. I don't have mutant massacre, so I don't know for sure. All of the mutants. No, I'm not checking anything out on Omar's X Men timeline videos. I'm I'm asking you guys. You tell me. Yeah, I was going to say I'm not Omar or Riley. I'm not positive with the full run. My my X Men doesn't start until like you know like that Infernal era, Infernal Jim Lee era. Oh, okay. Fall of the Mutants. Okay, that's what I have right before it. Okay, good. Mutant Massacre. Okay, good. I have that right before Fall of the Mutants. And then I just need to switch my X-Men with Inferno. Okay, good. Got it. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Kenny Crayley. Uh, oh, first, sorry, Kenny. Let me take your comment down so that we can uh, ban uh, Roberto real fast. Okay. Because he says Irredeemable is okay slash meh. <laughs> you're, you're welcome what? to your opinion here on your show on our show everybody what? welcome to their opinion even if it's wrong roberto what are you doing to me uh so kenny uh jess did you pre-order the marvel Legends six inch disney plus marvel tv show figures um i just got wanda and vision just needs to watch Falcon and Winter Soldier before you can pre-order the toys. Like B BBTS <laughs> has like a block that you can't do it, and that Norton 360 won't let you do it either until you watch the show first. Like, it's connected to your Netflix account. Oh Disney my god! I, I probably made a big mistake in selling this thing. <laughs> not gonna let me do anything anymore. I'm waiting for that chat line between you and Omar when you're like, "Uh, Norton 360 won't let me use the bathroom." Like, what do I do about this? <laughs> it keeps popping up. Uh, yeah, I just got Wanda and the vision because those, first of all, white vision was really awesome. And Wanda is Wanda. It's, it looks like Elizabeth Olsen. So that's cool. Uh, do you know what happens in Falcon Winter Soldier, Jess? Like, have you been like, not spoiled, but do you know like what happens? I, I know the ending. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, the thing about Falcon and all that kind of stuff and Winter Soldier. Uh, um, I don't want to spoil it for anybody in the chat, but 
There's I, a hot toy, Jess. There's a hot toy. Yeah, I know. I've I've seen that. Okay. So that's how I figured that out. Yeah, that that hot toy. I don't collect Marvel Cinematic Universe hot toys because if I do, I'm going to go all the way back and get like you know all the different versions and things like that. But that one is incredible. That looks 100 percent like Anthony Mackie. Mm. It's probably one of the best like uh, representations that they've done of a, of any character. Uh, my Mandalorian and child hot toy came in last week. Nice. I know. Have you opened yours? And no, no. I've opened it, but I haven't like taken it out and done. Well, no, that, with that's it. what I mean. Yeah, no, that's fine. No, I haven't, I haven't even had, I haven't had a time to do anything lately. Anything. I got yeah. like I got like this pile of packages that I haven't even opened yet. That looks familiar. No, yeah, that's the spawn. Those are the spawn figures and oh. everything else there. I don't I don't know. I, I, I don't, don't know what to see those spawn figures. Yeah, I'm gonna do a live an opening or something of it one day. But I just I haven't had the time. See those. Work schedules changed, you know, all that fun stuff. So. Unbox those spawn figures on the air right now. Come on. Let's see I, them. I can't reach it. You can't reach it. Take your headphones off and go over there. I'm dying to see those. Those are so cool. All right, let me see. Oh, this will be great. Look inside this box. That's what the figures came in? Whoa. Just look at the sheer size of this box. That's huge. Yeah. How many figures are in there? Three. Are they like uh, 12 inches or 16 inches or something? No, I think they're normal size. They're maybe seven inches, maybe. Whoa, like look at the size of that box. Let me see. Right, can you hear me okay? All right. Yeah. I switched my microphone around since I'm not near my other mic. All uh, right. Let's see. This. Right on. Right on. I'm going to point this out because I love that they have their own like printed like packing tape with the it's Spawn logo on it. Spawn logo on it. That yeah, I, think that's, I just think that's cool. That is boss. I think all McFarland toys are like that. Like sometimes I go to Target or whatever, and they have like packages there. I go, oh, there's McFarland toys. I can tell it because it's got the really cool spawn tape. McFarland's all about that branding. Candace, you showed up just in time to see Gabe's uh, unboxing of his spawn figures. Oh, great! It's a box full of boxes. But I got to give it up to them. Look at how they packed it, though. They have these like spacers. Wow. So that the boxes don't get dented up here. They got these yeah. corner things. I just got a I just got an omnibus in from uh mycomicshop.com and they did the same thing in their box. They put these little like foam spacers in the box. Oh, that reminds me, insocktrace.com. Before the unboxing, insocktrace.com, where you can get your collected editions up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts add two percent to that. There's always a gift card worth $50 given away at the end of every month. We just gave away one. And Carly won. Uh, $50 or more in an order gets you free shipping. Fabulous customer service. Fabulous packaging. That's in stocktrades.com. All right. So that's, back to the unboxing. That's box number one. Wow. I'm going to just... This is so awkward. <laughs> now, are all these boxes the same size? Yeah. Yeah, they're all the same size. Got more spawn tape in there. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> all right. So... 
three figures. Let's start. I don't know which one these are. We'll figure it out by opening them, right? That's the idea of this, Jess? Uh, yeah. Once you start pulling them out of the box, you should probably highlight yourself. So oh, yeah. we can get a really good picture of them. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. You can man the chat for me also. Let me know if there's any comments or questions or whatever. Uh, so, yeah, this is a Kickstarter that was like a year ago. It was like right as the pandemic happened. I think it was right after we got that first stimulus check. I was like, oh, I got this extra money. I'll go get this spawn figures. <laughs> All right, I know which one this is. Spawn. It's Spawn. Yes. <laughs> Look at that box. Nice. Yeah. They, they, he did a great job, like with the presentation of this. Like, this is probably one of the cooler like presentations. Yeah, and it's got the pull tab. Yeah. Nice. Let's see what. So the cool little slipcase. Uh, there's a cool little tab here. Again, like Spawn logo on everything. Mm -hmm. Good old Todd McFarland. Got to make sure you got your branding. And open it up, and all this crap just fell out. <laughs> it looks like a certificate of authenticity or something. Yeah, so you got a COA. Mm -hmm. And then there's. Uh, as an artist and a creator, oh, blah, 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 Tom McFarland, blah, blah, blah. But I guess it's like, here's all the stuff that I guess I'm supposed to have in here. Okay. So you go to checklists. Uh, okay, here's what it is. Because these are, this is a remaster of the original Spawn figure from 1996, 1994. And this is what, what it had. And then this is what the new remastered 2021 version has. Oh, it has everything. It has everything. <laughs> well, foam spacer. Oh, that's cool. Look at this. So this is the artist proof version. So it's it's all gray. Oh, okay. Besides the uh, so you get a you get a you get a sword. That's a dope looking sword. It's pretty like detailed. Like look at all the little kind of sculpture. Like you know, the, hey, look, there's another spawn logo right there on the tippity top. Nice. So it's a spawn sword. You get this. Uh, oh, some of the weapons are already. You're pulling out weapons that are easy to pull out. They're yeah, right. I'm going to pull all this out because then I got to pull out the foam to get the figure out. So okay. I oh, I see. They're in the foam. Okay. Yeah, it's some kind of a gynecological device. Oh, Gabe. <laughs> a little green sword or dagger made out of his uh, uh, ectoplasma power. Yes. You get a switch out head. Oh. I hope this is coming clear because it looks really yeah. clear on my on, on my end. So yeah, we can see that head. It looks really awesome. I can pull out all this foam around it. Like, this thing is like they designed this so like this thing could get shipped all over the world. It's not going to get any kind of damage. Yeah, the packaging is beautiful. So another cool thing in here, uh, spawn posable action figure from the record breaking comic book. Mm -hmm. And the way they did this packaging is they made it where you don't have to like, cut it open. It's not like a clamshell where you have to like, cut it open with the scissors or anything. It uh, just snaps open. Oh. Well, you don't have to take it out if you don't want. I mean... Each, there's three different versions, but it, it each comes with its own uh, comic uh, reprint of number one. Mm -hmm. 
I'll at least take this, take it out like this. What happened? Yeah, there's gonna be too much work to take the rest of this. Yeah. Hope everybody can kind of see. Uh huh. That's pretty cool. Every time I hit my keyboard on accident, it does that. That's what's going on. All right. Um, All right. So that's spawn number one figure. And again, like it comes with a comic, which is cool. And it's cool again because, like I said, it, nothing's like, you know, it's they make it so that you could take it out and you could play with it. You could take it out, put it back in. The comic just slides out. It has like this silver foil uh -huh. on the logo and on that border. Well, that's a full. That's the full comic. It is. I don't know what this is. This is cool though. Maybe I think so. There's the the original art to the cover for number one. Mm. Oh, it's a Spawn Kickstarter director's cut oh. edition. Okay. Oh, it's, it seems to be just the original art, which is awesome. So it's almost like one of those artist editions. Oh, whoa. This isn't number one. This, this is more to it than this. This is cool. I'm going to have to go through all this stuff. So I don't. Th I don't think this is one. I think there's a lot more in here than that. Okay. Uh, I guess. All right. Well, that's cra that's badass. Commentary on each page. Nice. And this is like. One of his first promotional images. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Look at that cape. Coming May 1992 from Image Comics and Malibu Comics. Malibu. Malibu was their distributor for the first like year or two, I think, for all image books. It was they they kind of just piggybacked on their distribution. So let's put that back in. That's a cool book. All right. Uh, give me a second. Let me put all this kind of back together a little bit so I don't lose anything. Okay. No problem. And by back together, I mean, I'm just going to throw it in the box and I'll worry about this later. All right. So that's Spawn figure number one. That's the artist edition. And that was boss. There's two more. impromptu live unboxing of all this fun stuff. All right, box number dose. This is, I don't know what version this is. Oh, I don't know yet. Still, it's tissue paper. Nice touch. All right, so this is the red version. I think this is like the main figure or the main like version. Three, three versions of the spawn figure himself. Right. Oh, okay. All the same stuff as before. It has a cool slip case. Ugh, my room's a disaster now, but it's all good. Pull tab. This time the pull tab is red. Ooh. I wonder if he has different wet. He probably has different weapons than two in the phone. I think so. So this also has the, what you get. It has a COA back here too. Oh, yeah. So here's the biggie. That's the one with the signed book plate, too. Or the signed oh, plate. Whoa. Oh, he smudged it. You suck, Todd McFarland. <laughs> I had some comic books, two books that I got back from Bruce Tim that got PPC'd, and the signature was smeared. 
That's neat. But That's it neat. is yeah, it is a yeah. little smudged. It's a little smudged. That sucks, but yeah. But it's a cool little little stand. So I could just kind of just set it somewhere. So this behind the signed book plates is the colored version of the sword. Uh, Same sword, but this one it's okay. painted. Mm-hmm. Uh, little ectoplasma blast. Another ectoplasm knife. Do, was the ectoplasm blast in the first box too? Uh, it was in the actual like figure case. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. That meat hook, but the sign is it's painted. Oh, okay. Ooh, that looks brutal. That, and that's the extra head. Okay, that's the extra head. Same one as the last one, but this one is just painted. It's cool. Yeah. Look at that cape. Now, is that cape wired or anything? Uh, No, it looks like it's solid. Oh, okay. I don't think there's any soft goods on it. And then it comes with a comic as well. This one's red foiled. And that's the back of the box. Oh, is that the? That's, that's the figure the itself. Oh, that is. Let me see. I want to just take one of these out to show everybody. I guess. No, it's all taped shut. I don't want to deal with all that. But there's, yeah. there's hands. There's a, a gun. I love Spawn. That he has a like, crazy military weapon. That's like my favorite version of Spawn. It's chains. There's a stand back there. Some great detail on the cape. Uh huh. Oh man, that cape is rocking. Yeah. And then this comic. Let's take a look at this comic. It's probably different since I'm guessing the artist edition one was the black and white to go with the black and white toy. So let's see okay. what we got here. I like how it comes in this hard case. Like the, the the book is this is you know came in great condition. So, and is that cardstock cover? Yep, cardstock cover, uh, hollow foil on the on the border there. Oh no, it's the same thing. Artist edition style. Oh, it's the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So that's cool. Oh, that's so neat. Got a two page splash. Look at that. Oh, nice. How dope that is. All right. Now let's open up the third one. All right. So let me put all this stuff back in the box. Real fast. With my smudgy book plate, I'm wondering if I can say something, but like, hey, can I get a different one? But I doubt it, but I'll live with it. All right, let's see what this third one's all about. Oi. It's turned into a project. <laughs>
All right, let's take a look at this third bad boy. So this one's green. Green, all right. Yeah, this cool spawn green. It's all foil and stuff, too. Oh, I wonder what's in this box. Probably a spawn figure. Is he green? Uh, we'll see. Same COA and all that fun stuff. Phone. Oh, okay. This is cool. All right. So this one has this crazy machine gun rocket launcher kill <laughs> everybody in the room uh, weapon. <laughs> nice detail. Uh, this one's got a plasma sword or something. I don't think it's not so much like the blast, like the other one. It's more like a sword kind of thing. Get a knife. Yeah. You get it. It's a different head. This is the uh, newer version of Spawn figure. So it has this his human face with the cool green eyes. Trying to keep everything in order somewhat. Now this version is... So this is more the modern version of Spawn. This is like the newer, updated version of Spawn. Uh, yeah, what's different about him? It is... Well, see, the other Spawn was... You had the mask on like this? Yes. This one has no mask. So it's just his like gnarly, decomposing face. Oh. With the shoestring. Because his face got split in half. Oh, man. In the comics, originally, it was because of Batman. It nailed him in the face with a couple of batarangs. Oh, but, really? Yeah. It's in that Spawn Batman book is where that happens. And then they got retconned as it happens, you know, a, a different way, of course. But Oh. So that's cool. He's got, like, this has, like, the more modern boot. He's got the big boot here. So this mm -hmm. is, like, the more modern version. A little bit of updated to the costume. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, all that fun stuff. Nice. Very nice. The comic, which I'm assuming is probably the same thing as the other one. It's a cool version of number one with a different cover. Cool. Yeah, it's the same thing, which is not, not a bad thing. It's dope. Yeah. I like seeing all the original art. You know, how often do you kind of really get to see this kind of stuff? So. This might all be spawn number one. I might be wrong that time I said it's not. It's just everything looks kind of different, probably because it's black and white. But that's cool. Uh huh. All right. All right. And that is that. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you for coming to my live unboxing, everybody. That was, that was the, nice. Really Tom nice. Harland spawn Kickstarter. What up? <laughs> cool. Uh, Candace, are you referring to this one? Oh, I want that, Jess. You don't have this? I don't have it. Is it hard to find? Uh, I don't. Well, I'm a Pulse Premium member on Hasbro. So uh, when it goes up, you immediately have to get it because it sells out so fast. Uh, it's probably available for pre order on Big Bad Toy Store or Amazon, maybe. I, I certainly wouldn't overpay for it, but it's really cool. It's got. Whoop, I froze there for a sec. It's got, yeah, here we go. And a couple of gauntlet hands and Thanos wins face. This is a beefy box. I'd like a death legend. Yeah, or the throne. They should make like a throne uh, accessory. Yeah, you can get them online. So this is if this is what you're looking for, Candice, it is out there. Uh, it's on BBTS for purchase, says Alexandre. So, uh, Candace, go uh, to Big Bad Toy Store and put your order in because it's kitchen. 
Looks like I'm going to have to pretty soon, too, then. Yeah. And if you want collected editions, the place to get them is in stocktrades.com, where your collected editions can be off with loyalty discounts adding 2% to that. Uh, at the end of every month, we give away a $50 gift card uh, supplied to us from the fine people at IST. And uh, we give it to a lucky viewer like you out there in a random lottery, random generator, random number generator. That's it. $50 or more in an order in the United States gets you free shipping, fabulous packaging, fabulous customer service. That's in stocktrades.com. All right. Well, I think that we can't pop that unboxing, so I think that's probably a good way to end the show, don't you think? Yeah, I think we're kind of tapped out. It's been a little over an hour. Uh, just uh, manipulated me into doing a live unboxing. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. That thing is cool. Yeah, it's great. I'm glad I got all three. I think the audience thought it was bitching, too. That That is really great. Yeah, I was excited to see that. That's really great. Yeah, it's only sat around here for a month. So. <laughs> well, it was time to open it then anyway. Where can they find you on the internet? You can find me, uh, Gabe Loves 90s Comics, on Instagram and here on YouTube. And you can find me, Omnidog, on Omnidog's Vault and on Instagram on Omnidog's underscore vault. Sazmurf liked the unboxing. Yeah. Well, I appreciate everybody giving me love for doing that unboxing. Absolutely. That was I'm, great. Unfortunately, I think I might have phone mode some people and they're like, oh, I regret not getting it. So that's too bad. Yeah. Well, that's the way it goes. So peace and love, peace and love. Thank you to the chat. You were great. Thank you to In Stock Trades. Thank you to our viewers who watch afterwards. And thank you to Gabe for unboxing the spawn figures, man. That's awesome. And our night is Omnibus Live Halls, Previews, and Reads. It's going to be a good haul for me. I got some great stuff this week. So I don't think I have anything. No? I don't I don't know. I don't think Just, so. I'll you got to get out there and buy some stuff for tomorrow. <laughs> I had a huge haul last week, and I double-dipped on something. So peace and love, peace and love. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. All right, everybody. We are out of here. Let's get gone. My room's a mess. This place is gross now. <laughs>